In the previous video, we have applied those noise settings to our biome generator, so now we have easier time controlling what are the parameters of the Berlin noise to create our map. Now, since we are planning to have multiple biomes, we would like our biome generator to be more flexible so that we can account for different types of layers created in different types of biomes. So I want to stop the game and I will open the biome generator script. So let me click those three dots or find it in the scripts folder and let's open up the biome generator. Great. Now currently our biome generator was delegated to create different types of layers depending on the uh, surface noise and the coordinates uh, and the y coordinates on our map and our terrain generator was the high level script that actually selected the biome generator. In our case right now we have only one biome generator but there is no reason why we wouldn't want to have multiple biome generators and the terrain generator would be able to select what type of biome generator should be used at a specific chunk. So right now in our biome generator we have this process chunk column uh, method and the issue with this is that it uh, calculates the noise height but then we have this rigid structure of a for loop where we loop for each y value and here are those if else if statements that handles what type of block should be placed and to modify this logic we would have to add else if some condition some logic here and the problem would be that we do not know if our condition should go before this else statement or this else statement or maybe it should be at the beginning or at the end. This is very rigid code and we cannot really change it depending on what type of biome do we have. So we need to refactor this code a bit to make it more maintainable for us so that we can implement more biomes. Now generally we would do it when we needed another biome but I want to do it right now before we go into the further section of this a tutorial. So to the rescue comes design pattern uh, called chain of responsibility. Okay, so chain of responsibility pattern is a behavioral design pattern. It allows us to design the way that the classes communicate with each other, so objects communicate with each other. And the basic idea is, let's see the UML diagram, that we create an object that will process the input parameters. So here is a sender and we send it to a receiver one. And in our case, this will be the first layer that should be created the most important one. So for example, we want to create water at a specific height. Now, if the Y value that we are going to pass to this layer is correct, we are going to place a water block. If not, if we fail to handle the specific input parameters, our chain, chain of responsibility will pass the values to the next handler, next object. So for example, this will be our air layer that will place air blocks in a specific position depending on the Y value. And thus, we are going to assign the first handler, the most important one, to the biome generator, which is our sender. And we are going to be able to decide on the fly through the inspector what is the uh, order of our layers that should be placed and if we want to place a specific layer in our pipeline or not. So this will substitute our if else statement by creating specific objects and we are going to handle this through the objects, not through the code inside our biome generator. Now just to show you the end effect of what we are going to do so that you may be able to better understand the idea here is that we have our default biome and the default biome will start its work from the water layer and the water layer will either handle the Y coordinate it is, it is passed to it or it will del delegate the work to the air layer. If the air layer doesn't handle it, it will be delegated to the surface layer and surface layer handles the tiles that are below certain level else we are going to delegate it to the underground layer where it, we are going to only place the dirt blocks and this will be the default biome but for our desert biome, for example, we can place a water, then air, and then we can select a surface layer, which is now sand tile, compared to the surface layer of our default biome, which was grass dirt tile. And this is the idea that we can easily modify the order at which our layers will handle our coordinates, and thus we are going to be able to create different biomes. Okay? 
If it is still not clear, let's implement the code and I'm sure that you will understand what we are doing much more easily. So first thing that I will want to create is a new folder here because it is getting cluttered. So let's create a new folder in this underscore scripts. Let's call it uh, block layers. Okay, let's open this folder up and here we will need to create a new C-sharp script. So let's right click, create a new C-sharp script. I'm going to call it block layer handler. Okay, let's open this script up in Visual Studio. Okay, great. Now, according to our diagram, what we are going to create is a abstract class called handler, which will define the basic behaviors of our uh, handler, which uh, then will be extended by the specific layers that will handle specific um, situations like water, air, surface, and so on. So what we want to do first is mark our class as abstract. Let's delete the start and update because we want to have this as a mono behavior. So we are going to be able to assign it inside the inspector. And what we will want to do is as follows. First, we will want to have a reference to a block layer that is called next. So our next block layer handler will be called when our current one can't handle this a specific input parameter. So now we are going to have a default method that will be a public method. And this method will be called public bool handle. The input parameters will be the chunk data. So our chunk that we are modifying, that we are setting the blocks of. The parameters x, y, and z. You could bundle them into a vector 3, but I have put it as a separate int values. Next, we have the surface height that we have calculated inside our biome generator. And at the end, we are going to have the map seed offset. So now we are going to call if try handling method. And try handling method will be exactly the same method that we have here. So it will take the chunk x, y, z, surface height, and map seed. And if you type it, you can right click on it and quick actions and generate this method inside our file. And this will be our method that each of our subclasses of our block layer handlers will override to define its own logic. And it will return bool, so it will return true if our uh, specific layer has handled the input parameters. Now, if it didn't, so if it did, we are going to return true on our, in our handle method that is the default uh, method for our block layer handler. Else, we are going to check if the next block layer handler is available, meaning that after our current layer hasn't handled the block, we are going to find the next block layer. And if it is the case, we are going to return and we are going to call our next dot handle and pass the same data to it. And this is the handle method that we have here. And if next is null, so we have no more layers to handle our input data, we simply return false to inform the program that we haven't handled the uh, block, the specific coordinates. So now, uh, the most important thing here is to make this try handle not private, but protected. And we want to make it abstract so that the subclasses needs to override this try handle handling method. Okay, and this is it for the default class that you would create for a chain of responsibility pattern, the abstract class that needs to be subclassed so that we can create the same if else uh, statement, but instead of using this if else block inside our biome generator, we are going to call here block handler dot handle. And this one line will delegate this whole work out from the biome generator into those block layer handlers and uh, its subclasses. Let's go back to our Unity. Let's make sure that you save the script so file and save all. Let's go back to Unity to create a specific subclass of this block layer handler. Okay. So let's create a couple of scripts that we are going to prepare. We are going to right click create a C sharp script and let's first call the air layer handler. Okay. Next one, so right click, create a C sharp script, and we are going to have water layer handler. We can copy the layer handler name so that we do not have to type it. Okay, let's let it compile. Right click, 
create a C sharp script, we are going to need a surface layer handler. And I will paste the rest of the name. And last one will be underground layer handler. So right click, create C sharp script, and I'm going to call underground and paste the rest of the name. And those will be the layer handlers that we are going to need to create our default biome. Okay, so maybe let's take a break and in the next video we are going to start implementing all of those layers. Before we go to the next video, thanks to your support, a new feature was enabled called Join as a member of Sunny Valley Studio channel. Thanks to your support, I will be able to make more tutorials with a decent code base that you can grab and use in your own projects. And there are different perks like those awesome badges made by Matt, uh, a pixel artist. I will post a link to his itch.io website in the description where you can find awesome pixel art. And of course there are more perks, you can read more about them in here. And I will post a separate video about the memberships that are available. Great, see you in the next video.